Well, while it hasn't been vintage and we've certainly struggled when we've played the top sides, we have at least partially recovered from the crisis we were experiencing last time out. The main reason for that is an upturn in morale following the sale of a player and a few new contracts. We've also got a few big problems now for the rest of the season, with our new January signings almost all out injured almost instantly at the same time. Yes, hello and welcome along to a very busy part 76 of Saving South End with me, Daniel. We found our goalkeeping solution, possibly from within the club. We've got new signings to introduce who so have all now got injured. We've got some big problems with injuries elsewhere as well. And we've also got some mixed and stumbling form, albeit far better than we had last time. So if you're looking forward to all of that as we continue to try and work our man management magic, then please do put a thumbs up on it. As you can see, we're not going to be competing near the top six again this year. We're certainly not going to be near the bottom either, having done enough over the festive period. But let's go through to the transfers first, because there's a couple of young players potentially going out on loan again. But there have been three ins and three outs from the football club this January. A couple of them you were familiar with already. But we've got two more new signings and one other senior player going out. So let's start with the ins because one of them's also on the outs page. Soren Hansen, you knew about. We were signing for three and a half million from Adense. He's an 18 year old centre half with massive potential for the future. But for now, he's going back to Adense for the rest of the season and will come and be part of our squad next year. But he's got a good personality. He's six foot. He's decent in the air and he's good on the ball as well, which may allow us to play out from the back a bit more. The second one was a really good sign-in and has now become an even more important one given what's happened elsewhere. He came in initially to replace Adozi as our second choice left winger. When he's back from injury, he's now going to be first choice because David Mira has come in for 5 million from Bodo Glynn. He is a Norwegian international at 24. He's happy to be an impact sub, which was the initial plan. We're retraining him as a left midfielder, but he started really well. He's great at all the technical attributes. He's got real quality. And I feel like he's going to be a bit of a gem for the future. I feel he's slightly underrated at the moment. I feel one attribute gain in a lot of areas. And you've then got a 16 for passing, crossing, off the ball, acceleration, agility. You've got someone who looks like a superstar. So very close to being that elite level. But for now, an upgrade on a dozy, an upgrade on the wingers we've had before. And up there with Sam Allo, which is really important. We'll see why in a moment. The other sign-in has also now picked up an injury as well. But for 5 million quid, we have managed to replace Lucas Daniel with a player I'm very excited about. Because Aaron Berek has come in from Partizan Belgrade for 5.25 million. He's a 20-year-old Serbian wonder kid. Three and a half star ability, five star potential. Great on the ball in a playmaker role with the passing, vision, technique, anticipation and agility as well. He's also got that determination and that resolute personality to take him to the top. And he'd started pretty well for us before picking up a knock. But you might get to see him in the second of today's episode. If not, you'll certainly see him next time. On the outs front, you knew that Hanson went out on loan after signing. You knew that Lucas Daniel was forcing his way out for 10 million quid. And to be fair, I'd argue our replacement is just as good, if not better. And then we've also loaned out Noam Perez, who is just starting to throw his toys out the pram. And being 32 on a shorter term contract, I had to make decisions. There's a few others I have offered new deals who you can probably deduce from who's not been sold. But this one I couldn't. So I've loaned him out, got him out the club, ended the unhappiness. And Noam Perez has gone to Boca Juniors, back to Argentina. And they've got a buying clause for the future as well, which I'm sure they'll take up in the summer. So all of that leaves the squad in pretty good nick, or it did until we picked up a few injuries. Because in addition to both new boys getting injured and Bernberg picking up a knock, we got a really bad one for Sam Ammo. He is out for two to four months with a broken ankle. He was really starting to shine as well, which is a shame. He'd improved over the last year. He was producing a few more big moments in matches. And while Mira is probably as good as him and it's not an immediate problem. And of course now with him we've got a dozy. We've still got two players. It's not ideal timing. Particularly given that all three of the players are injured now. Because a dozy has only just come back from one. So it's going to leave us with a problem tonight. But not for the long term. Hopefully he comes back the same player at least. 
There have been a few more serious injuries since the January update in FM, and Sam Ammo is the unlucky man in our team. But if we have a look at how that's affected the schedule, it's been a bit of a mixed bag, and you can see we've probably gone to slightly more defensive and cautious football, holding on to wins, making defensive changes, putting on, say, two sets of fullbacks in front of each other at 1 0 up in league games. But we have won some of those crucial home games against some of the poorer sides in the division. I should point out though, and I didn't realise how bad it was until I went and had a look during our crisis run. If you see our away record for this season, we are not even in double figures yet. Two wins from 11 games, nine points in the league. We're relegation fodder when it comes to that. So it might be the return of a second tactic is needed if we're to compete on the road. For the home games, we won 1-0 against Wolves with Joe Wills getting a crucial winner. 2-0 at home to Bournemouth with a Joe Hugill brace. Joe Wills missed a penalty in that one. Away at Brighton, beaten comfortably by two goals to nil, despite a great performance from Jude Sadler, who came in for an injured Caljo and has now produced good displays in succession. He did the same against Everton, where he got man of the match in a 2-0 win. Thankfully, what was a terrible performance in a 1-0 lead thanks to Bernberg became a relatively easy finish thanks to a red card and penalty in the 84th minute. Rasmus Jensen putting that one away. We lost 3-2 at Arsenal, disappointingly so. We are 3-0 down, we were getting hammered. We did almost peg them back. Samu Omarodion scored their first, a hero from our former Twitch save with Luton. The San Huesa and Mira's first for the club on his debut off the bench as well. Almost got us a magical point. We won 4-0 at home to QPR in the FA Cup. Two for Jensen, one for Mira and one for San Huesa. A 4-1 defeat at home to Manchester United with Joe Wills getting a consolation. Rasmus Hoyland running a show with a hat trick. He looked pretty good in that game, it must be said. We did bounce back 3 0 at home to Fulham. A Pedro Neto red card at 2 0 up really helped us with a dozy, Hugo and Parker scoring. A dozy needs credit here. He came on after the Mira injury and was phenomenal. Got a goal, got an assist, and just ran the show. A two all draw followed at Southampton with Joe Wills equalising from the kickoff when we went 2 1 down. And Dooney and Archer getting the goals for the hosts. The Joe Wills brace was enough for us. Teddy Ivanov, still in a goal drought, had the gall after that game to ask for a new contract, despite the fact he's not scored in about two and a half months. His last goals were the four in that Brentford game, and he has not scored a goal since then. So as we head into this run, we've got to think about preserving legs a little, and we've also got to think about cups, because the league is a bit of a foregone conclusion this year. Our next five league games are all against sides in that top mix, which we're not going to compete with. So let's just focus on doing well in the Cups. We're going to be in the Europa playoff. Let's prioritise that. And then if we are in a bit of trouble in the league, we can go on a run later in the season where we've got some favourable home games towards the end. So for now, let's go and get through to Napoli at home where we will not be seeing our star goalkeeper in action because with us almost through here, I have decided to go for a backup team, give some young players a chance on the bench, but also give Caljo his first game back from injury. But he is now our second choice keeper, whether he likes it or not. He was linked with Saudi Cubs before. He wants a new deal as a star player. We'll see if that changes after half a year of being a sub. But Jude Sadler has come in. He's improved. He's doing well. And he's the best goalkeeper we can find at the minute. There's no one in the scout reports better. And now there's no one at the club better. Jude Sadler is our number one. And that will remain the case this season. The rest of the team is heavily rotated. We've got problems again with Brazilian signings because Fernandes is throwing his toys out the pram at the back and he's not really improving that much. Herbert has overtaken him now and he's starting to realise his potential. So might become the new first choice backup centre half. Emir Williams unhappy wanting a new deal. We've offered him one and hopefully he'll sign it. You can see crucially the unhappiness has ended for Harrison and for Takatsuka who have both signed new deals. And Joe Wills ended his of his own accord just because he didn't get the offer he wanted from another club. But our 11 today is very much fully rotated. Rasmus Jensen is playing left wing because all of the first three choices are out. Adozi is the closest to being fit and should feature at the weekend. I've also got a potential debutant on the bench in Simon Cummins, who was the star of last year's youth intake and is now actually better than he looked then. He's improving, he's driven, he's a good player. and I want to try and get him off the bench in this one. Our 11 in full though is Caljo in goal, Adeniji and Ishmael the fullbacks with Herbert and Fernandez as centre half. Asensio has had to move into midfield due to fatigue and injuries. Bernberg's out, 
Beres is out. Daniel's left the club. Harrison's got a heavy match load. He's joined by Jimenez, who is just back from injury and will play an hour or so today. Jensen and Takatsuka are out wide. I've no idea how Jensen will play on the left. And then up front is Joe Hugill, who we've now registered for the squad with San Huesa alongside him as well. Our final home game at a group stage as we face Napoli in the penultimate game. They're above us as a Lille, our next opponents, but this is just about trying to get some form of result. I'm not really worried about a big win. We can draw it. I'll be a happy man. I did see, as the lineup showed, that they've still got a 34-year-old Victor Osimen up front, but they've got a lot of other good players who are now pretty experienced too. And Guisa, Emerson Royale has joined them, Alex Mere in goal, and Iwo at the back. But they have got a few good youngsters in that team as well. No manager who got sacked literally about two weeks ago and not been replaced yet. Ostigar drops out of the team, another experienced one. And Sturgeu, who we managed in the head coach save this year. Let's go and get through the dressing room though. Pump the fist and tell the lads the fans are up for it. You need to be up for it too. We've got no reaction at all. Isn't that what we wanted? Let's get through the Europa League music and into the first half. The big opportunity for Southend United to make sure of their progression in their first European season. Well, almost a sellout at Steve Tilson Park as we're back in the midst of an attack here on the right. Ishmael with a shot over the bar. Must have started with a free kick because there's vanishing spray there. It wasn't a great effort. Um, a half chance, maybe even a quarter chance at best. The San Huesa picks the ball up at the back. He finds Moretto. Travorcio into Moretto. Carries the ball forward again. Emerson Royale takes the ball out towards the right. Osimen gets in behind though. Chance to find support. He does. He goes back to the edge of the box. Moretto's in. And Caljo not quite back up to full sharpness there. Within 10 minutes, we're behind at home to Napoli. And to be fair, when we've played the big boys, whether it's domestically or in Europe this year, we have generally struggled to produce the goods. And even in this run, we've won the games you'd expect us to. We've won the home games against lower league opposition and the bottom teams. But as soon as we play the United and Arsenal, We've always fallen apart. As it's into Herbert. That's what we needed. A big bullet header from a set piece by the big man. And that is exactly what we need to get back into this game. You can see Jensen and Asensio struggling. Both of them out of position. We'll encourage the lads. We've patched together this team. If we could just get a goal or two up. We could bring on some of the youngsters. Jensen's taken the corner which is great for us. Because he gets an assist and a good rating as a result. And we tend to the break. This has been a pretty nothing game. It's 1-1. One, one. Probably 0-0 nil, nil would have been fairer. As Hugh Gill flicks the ball on. San Huesa can't get there. Emerson Royale composed back to his keeper. Mere. Time in possession. Plays out to Iwu. Into Anguisa. But it's been nicked, has it? Good work from Asensio. He's not the best on the ball. But he's great at winning it back. Just plays it simple to Hugh Gill. Adonigi's making that run down the right. Might have to go this summer. Because he's really not improving. But he finds Takatsuka. Into the box is a good ball. Jensen's got the height at the back post. And Hugh Gill's shot is brilliantly saved by Mere. And while he's not great positionally on the left, Jensen, you don't want to see a six foot four centre forward arriving at the back post if you're a fullback, do you? Mere claims the corner quite comfortably in the end. And just after I praise Jensen, he's let us down. But we are getting onto the front foot. Can we take advantage before half time? San Huesa and Asensio exchange passes. Finds Adonigi. Asensio again. Ball out towards the right. No, Fernandez cuts in with it. He finds Ishmael. Carrying forward down the left. Plenty of space to run into. Emerson Royale is taken away by Jensen. And Cameron Ishmael, who very rarely scores a goal, has just run a very considerable distance under no pressure. And then rifled one into the corner past Alex Mere. We go 2-1 up, which would be a wonderful outcome. And as we get through the dressing room, we tell the lads to avoid complacency. We've got most of them focused. Facundo Fernandez is worried. Let's just say, prove what you can do. He's inspired by that. Everyone's happy. We've got to think about fitness with the weekend as well. I don't want to give him an S90 coming back. Another poor corner from Jensen. Hugo, we've got to look after. That doesn't often do 90. And I'd probably like Herbert to play at the weekend as well. It's a long ball forward towards Ossiman. Fernandez misses his header. But Herbert does well with it and finds Caljo. Has support again. We've also got to be wary that there's two fullbacks playing here as well on the right. As we carry it forward with Jensen who cuts into Asensio. 
White to Takatsuka, who gets to the byline. Options in the middle, San Juez has won. And this is turning into a very good night against a very decent opposition. 3-1 to Southend. And yes, they've done what a lot of European sides do and build a very experienced squad. We're taking advantage of them as Jimenez finds Asensio and now Ishmael inside to Herbert. One more and we might bring a couple of youngsters on as Asensio goes wide to Takatsuka. Down the line is San Huiza. There's plenty of support. They've made hard work of this Europa group, but this is one of our better performances, if not the best. Anguissa gets it away though. Only as far as Fernandez and now Asensio into Jimenez. Why to Adonigi? Still only five gone in the second half. We're flying forward. Adonigi to the byline. Back to Takatsuka. He plays it all the way back to Jimenez and Asensio. Support on the left, but he goes alone. That is not a long way over the bar by Asensio. Playing out a position and doing a very solid job. With 55 gone, we lead 3-1. And who knows if we can win these last two games. We might even make the top eight and avoid the playoff round, which would be quite good given some of the injuries we've had. As Travolcio at the back finds Foire. And now Perez back to Iwu. We're just past the hour mark, so we will look at some subs in a moment. And you can see Hugo has struggled a little bit today. But Jensen can go up. We can bring someone on on the left, one of the youngsters. As Takatsuka gives it to Fernandez. We're just so good at harrying and winning it back today. And the one thing that pleases me is that after the last episode and most of the last two months, we do look a bit more like Southend United today. It's still a long time for it to go wrong, though. Lindstrom goes back to Travolcio. Lindstrom again. And Gisa, the Perez, and Ossimen. Good football. Through ball to Lindstrom's brilliant. They're in behind, and it's just wide. I wouldn't have fancied Caljo to save it either, so it's a good job that it was off target. As Fernandez has a free kick. Come on, let's be greedy and have one more goal, just so I can make the subs. Would be nice if we stopped giving the ball away down this right-hand side. Adonigi recovers for his mistake, though. Wins it back. Fernandez to Asensio. He gives it away. He's about to come off, though. So we'll forgive him for that one. Or will we? Because it might cost us a goal. Osimhen's there, and he puts it over. What a chance wasted for him, given his finishing ability. They're growing back into this game, so let's be careful now. We're going to bring on Alfie Harrison for Jimenez. And then I think it's going to have to be youngsters for the most part. Jensen will go up front for Hugh Gill. On the left, we could bring on Valdo Kamara. We're also going to go for Asensio off, but who comes on there? I've not really got many centre midfield options. So it's probably going to have to be a youngster. Simon Cummins can't play that deep. So the only options I've got are Abu Sanko, who is has already played twice for us in the Europa League, and we've got Callum Graham, who's a centre half that's not played yet. I'm going to put Sanko on for Asensio. It's not actually that much of a step down, is it? And we'll save two changes to hopefully bring on youngsters if we're still comfortable a bit later on, just to get a couple more of their debuts. We've got 20 minutes remaining as Kaljo plays out from the back. Adoniji will pick it up in the right back area. Big ball forward is pretty optimistic for Sanhuesa. He's headed away as far as Lindstrom, who gets it again on the left-hand side for Napoli, who have improved, but look at that from Sanko. Fearless stuff from the youngster to win it back. He finds Harrison, who gives it away. God, the young defender, the young midfielder, sorry, does really well. Oh, and it deflects in as well. It's cost us a goal. Harrison's the experienced man with the new contract, the newfound happiness. He gives it away after Sanko had done all the hard work for him. Sanhuesa boots it from the kickoff and Ishmael can bring it forward to Kamara. Jensen holds it up up front. Now we're back in trouble again. It's just, it's a tale of silly mistakes this season. and A lot of conceding possession. We're not as good on the ball as we have been in the previous season or two. There's definitely that to it. Fernandez plays out from the back here to Kamara. Now we've got a chance in behind because Jensen's got space. There's three in the middle. Got to find the cross. Emerson Royale wins it, but Jensen comes out with the ball somehow. Cuts him from the left. On his right foot. Chance to shoot. He's straight at Mere. There are some tired legs in there. Herbert's starting to struggle a bit. Adonigi's just had a poor game. So we've just over 10 to go. I think we're going to go for changes. You can see Herbert at the back's having a tough one. So Emir Williams on there. And I'm also going to bring on. It feels harsh not to bring Cummins on when he's the best youngster there. 
but I'm going to leave him a bit longer. He is the youngest. I'm going to bring Baranda on for Adeniji. I'm going to play safe at the back, improve that right back area where we have been caught out a bit. I'm hoping at home the championship opposition with virtually our first 11 at the weekend will be able to get ourselves ahead and maybe rest people again then. But for now, it's about hanging on for three points that would put us right in the mix for the top six, bring money into the club and really be a sign of intent. At the moment though, Anguis is carrying it forward and we look under pressure. Travolcio gets towards the byline, cleared away by Emir Williams, the sub. But it's back under our pressure. We can't get out the final third. Into the box, Moretto's up. It is just over the bar. There's three minutes of stoppage time. I'm putting the fullbacks on defend. We're getting roasted down that right-hand side of ours, so we'll drop Takatsuka as well. We're also going to go for time-wasting all the time. We're also going to play for set pieces. We're going to slow the pace down. We're not going to counter. And we're even going to drop that line of engagement. I just do not want to concede because this result would give us a chance on missing out on those extra two matches. And that's what we've got to strive for next Thursday. A massive win at home to Napoli. It was tense in the second half, but we did enough overall. A good victory, a lot of players rested, and a couple building fitness back as well. Now we go to Sunday and the FA Cup fourth round. As we host Championship High Flyers Ipswich, we'll be looking to cause a shock down at Steve Tilson Park. Well, we're back on Sunday for fitness test time, but we have had a few big transfer moments for potential players out in the meantime, as you can see. Tottenham have identified Wills as a target. We've had that message for United as well. Perhaps more importantly, though, we've had an offer from a European giant, which apparently he's not interested in. We'll look at that in a minute. We've also had an offer from Coventry for Sadler, but now he's our first choice keeper. He's not even interested in speaking to them. I'm not selling him for less than 5 million. Miranda is happy because we're playing him in his preferred position. That was after he whinged about having to cover left back due to injuries. But let's show you the big offer because this is the one that we're talking about here. Bayern Munich have come in for Joe Wills, the 23 year old English striker. He is high quality and while he's not interested in joining Bayern, if we get an offer then from Spurs, Liverpool, United, you can see who else is interested. It could be a very important window for us because while we lose a superb striker, the best at the club, we gain an awful lot of money. But we're not in a position we have to sell because the fact we've got, what, 150 million in the bank and we're doing well. So we've kind of got to take the Brighton approach here, like with a Caicedo or something, and try and work up a ridiculous price. So as a result of that, we're going to remove and exclude that and get it as a percentage of next sale up to 30%. We're also going to try and push this up as much as possible. And if they say no, then you know what? So be it. We know he's not going to join this club. It's just about whether we can get others to offer the same amount. And overall, I want this deal to be worth over 100 million because that's realistic for a striker of this quality now. They'll probably reject it. But if it just garners up that market interest, I think public that there's been an offering, it will certainly get us in a good position. We've got a 100 million pound striker. And that's what I want to get for this guy because he is going to be a superstar. They've withdrawn their offer. but There's six Premier League clubs interested that all want him. And if we get an offer probably halfway between the two there, we're going to have to accept it. So let's go and get through to the fixtures for the Ipswich game where we are going to go full strength because I don't want any slip ups. We've got the chance if we beat Lille on Thursday to go above them and into the top eight of the Europa League phase because we're ninth at the minute. Lille are two points above us. So if we win it, we will go above them and nothing will stop us being in the top eight. The Scottish side's performing well again, but let's not worry about that for now. Team selection time and it's going to be full strength. You can see a few tired legs from Thursday, a few difficult decisions to make. But I'm going to go pretty much as strong as possible unless there's certain areas where we have to protect people. Where with Bernberg and possibly still with Beres as well, we maybe need to do that for our centre midfielders. So I think you'd call this first team with a couple of exceptions today. There's a few areas where we've stepped back a little, but I don't think it's going to cost us. We've gone for the more aggressive fullbacks because we're playing at home to a team that should be weaker. We've got a dozy back who is the strongest left winger available at the minute. And with Harrison struggling with both his match load and his performances, I've gone for Joel Linton, who is of course cup tied for the Europa League games. Aside from that, it's as strong as you could be with the exception of Harrison Parker. 
and Baranda, who I just want to give a little bit more of a rest to. And I've chucked Simon Cummins on the bench just in case we have got the chance to throw him on. But Jude Sadler is back, the number one keeper, with Asensio and Kamara at fullback. Emir Williams has signed his new deal and is now happy. He's alongside Fernandez, who gets another game. Yucalano and Adozi, the two wide men. Jimenez back in his preferred role alongside Joel Linton. And Wills and Ivanov, the two up front. Can Ivanov end the goal drought? He got to double figures in super quick time and has been absolutely shocking since. So let's see if today is the day that changes or whether the run will continue. Hopefully we avoid the banana skin as Ipswich are in town. Well, not a huge number of familiar names in the Ipswich starting lineup. You'd expect a few younger players to come through now, but there are a few more on the bench as well. Names that you would recognise include Troy Parra up front and Hans Masengo in midfield, both of whom were stars of our Bristol City save back in FM23. I'll put that short series up in the eye above if you missed it. Aaron Ramsey, the other one, is in there as a number 10. There's also Elise on the bench, Josh Griffiths, the subkeeper, and Matt O'Reilly, the former Celtic and MK Dons man. So let's go and say we are favourites for a reason. Yeah, leave them in no doubt as to why. We've got a few motivated anyway. We're in pretty good nick at the minute. So let's just hope that we can find those home performances we have in recent weeks. We've done pretty well against the bottom sides. And now against the championship team, a bit different with them having momentum. But in front of a sold out crowd, we can deliver. It's a little bit difficult that we've only got one striker scoring. Of course, the dozy isn't fully fit. Of course, Joel Linton wouldn't normally be playing if we didn't have two injuries there. But it is a side that I would expect to beat this team. And at the moment, it's been uninspiring. Though Asensio's got a throw to Ivanov. If he scores one, he could easily get a hat trick in this game. We just need the moment. As Asensio finds your Colano, if we do end up losing Wills in the next week, he's going to need to end that goal drought pretty quick or we're in trouble. As Concesau picks it up in the middle, big ball over to Chino. Asensio doesn't deal with it. It falls for Troy Parrott. Joel Linton wins the tackle, but it falls for Chino. And we're behind at home to the championship team. This is where it starts to go wrong, isn't it? 1 0 to whip switch. And to be fair, Neither side has done a lot. Nil-nil would be fair, but I don't think we can complain at the fact that we're behind here. As Jimenez goes to Ivanov, good ball through. He's equalised straight away, but was he onside? My initial instinct was, where's the flag? I've got to be honest. But the flag didn't go up, and that usually means with VAR, we get away with it, but not this time. My instincts were right. The Ivanov goal drought just won't end, but of course, when he's offside, he finishes it perfectly. We've got two minutes to the break and we've got a free kick. Joe Wills is on it. A moment of magic, perhaps. Chance to curl round the wall. Joe Wills delivers again. And this is why he's so sought after. It's not just the goals from open play. It's the quality in the air, on the floor, from set pieces, from open play. He's got the lot. And in what has been a pretty average performance so far, he's bailed us out when we get to half time. We're going to say we're not happy with the display. We'll probably only get Joel Linton to an hour. A dozy's not going to do too much, I don't think. And again, Teddy Ivanov is letting us down, so probably won't last too much longer. Thought this might be the day he ends it, as Kamara finds a dozy. If we can get ahead, I'll probably leave him on, as Will's cross doesn't find its target, but it's one back by Jimenez for a dozy again. And to Jimenez, wide right is Yucalano, but he goes alone. Looks for the support on the left from a dozy. Three in the middle, now four. Back to Kamara, Adozi again. Got a cross, goes alone. Sam Adozi scores. What the hell do I know? I said he's got a cross. He goes alone from such an acute angle. And he hits it in off the far post. 2-1 to Southend United. And from our start to the second half, we've deserved that. A zip switch are playing out from the back. Now don't get complacent. Joel Linton on the yellow and struggling. He'll be off in a minute. As Parrot picks the ball up to Concesau and Ramsey. We're under pressure again here. Troy Parrott's in. The flex away as far as Ivanov, who flicks on. But nobody there. And now we will make some changes. 25 to go. Joel Linton is going to be replaced by Alfie Harrison again. We're also going to go a dozy off with Kamara dropping to midfield and Ishmael going in at left back. We'll take off possibly Fernandez for Parker, but I want to get him off for 90 if we can. So let's just stick with it for now. Two changes made. It should freshen things up a bit. And hopefully we can keep pushing forward because we've been really good second half. 
Williams has it at the back for Fernandez. Into midfield for Harrison. Didn't have a great time when he came on against Napoli. Here hopefully he'll look a little better. Ishmael's giving it away but he's lucky to win it back. Wills goes wide to Kamara. He's giving it away this time. Runs straight into Masengo. Just a few too many liberties being taken with the ball which is a concern for me. But Fernandez has won it back again here. And we're looking for that killer ball as Ishmael. Support down the line. Harrison inside of him. Instead finds Jimenez. Tip of the centre circle to Ivanov. Support on the right from Yucalano. It's been quiet. But gets to the byline here. Great run. Good goal. That should be game over. And it means we can probably leave Ivanov on as well. With 20 minutes to go. It's 3-1 to South End. And I think we've avoided the banana skin here. Joe Will struggling physically. So we'll get him off after this corner. Same for Jimenez too. As it's headed away as far as Ishmael. Maybe the youngsters can come on. Ishmael doesn't make it. Masengo clears. Please just don't give away a goal. Let us have a comfortable finish. Ishmael breaks down the left yet again. Four in the middle. Ivanov's won. Oh, it would have been a lovely moment. Yukulano wins it back. He's desperate for a goal. He's into the back post. Blackburn punches. Well won back by Harrison, but it's cleared away. And Ishmael gets it back into him. And as they can't get out their own half. As Wills. Oh, on the bicycle kick. There's a striker who's confident. 18 to go. You're going to get a rest now, son. But first of all, we'll go for Jimenez off. Who goes centre midfield? It can be Asensio with Jimenez. Uh, sorry, Jimenez with Adoniji going to right back. Joe Wills will come off for... I think we'll go for young son, Huayza. There's no point bringing on Hugo Gill. Let's get him on the other side. Ivanov, just go as a target, man. Don't even worry about scoring. And then we'll save the final sub because this time, if we are still two up with 10 to go, I'll make sure we get Simon Cummins on. On the left, Kamara's really struggling. He's played a lot of football recently as Yucalano picks it up in the number 10 position. It falls for Alfie Harrison. Into the box he goes, four in the middle. The only thing that tips off this day is a debut for Cummins and a goal for Ivanov. He's on the left, Val uh, Ishmael, Valerian Ishmael, I nearly went for there. Williams finds Asensio, shot from distance. Over the bar. Valdo Kamara is going to come off now. And Simon Cummins will make his senior debut with 10 to go. He's not a natural left midfielder, but it's just about getting him on the pitch. With a few minutes to go, he can enjoy the occasion as we are going through and progressing in the FA Cup. This could be a very successful season still. It's going to be a boring one in the league. We've had two battling relegation, that miracle year in the top six last year. Now we're back to probably about where we are. But we've got to stop conceding stupid goals because it's another grandstand finish. Eight minutes added on have been played, but Troy Parrott gets a goal. And again, the scoreline looks closer than it should have been. Do not get complacent. A debutant, a couple of good goals as well. In the end, against a championship team, defensively, we were found wanting again. A hundred grand in a bank. We're all very happy with that. And well done to Simon Cummins, who's going well. So it will be FA Cup or Europa League action that we centre around next time, hopefully both. If you're looking forward to it and you did enjoy those two thrilling 3-2 victories, then please do put a thumbs up on the video. Let me know if you think we can go all the way in either of them and win a major trophy for the first time. I'm certainly not convinced given our away form and our defensive record in recent weeks, but it is good to finally have the crisis over, have the morale of the squad back under control. And crucially, while they're injured at the moment, those new signings will make a big difference. Let me know how you think we get on the rest of the year, whether or not we have Joe Wills in the next episode. If we get a big offer from Manchester United or Spurs, we could be in a little bit of trouble on that front. I'll see you next time to find out the answer. If you want to see it too, subscribe and turn that notification bell on to make sure you don't miss a thing. We've also got regular content from the Twitch channel where we're live tonight and a football podcast with links to both up in the eye above. And I'll see you back here in a couple of days time as we finish our week of action with a big one from Europe or the FA Cup with Southend United.